On the inside of this fence, a relatively small community of animals and plants has been saved. But I've got to say, some of them really are pretty odd. And to stand any chance of seeing them, I'm going to have to wait until after dark. Welcome to the weird world of the native Aussie night. This is a southern brown bandicoot. And I'm getting a superb view of it. I'm so close that I can actually see the saliva glistening in its mouth as it's chewing its food. It's one of about 20 different species of bandicoot and they all come equipped with this long pointed and sensitive snout. And they're principally insectivores, meat eaters, but they do play a very important role when it comes to maintaining the plant community in this ecosystem. He spends all of his time digging for food. By the end of the night, he'll have covered the grassland with lots of snout-shaped conical pits. Here's one of the pits here. And when the wind blows, grass seeds are caught in here, along with a lot of other detritus, all of which is rich in nitrogen, so they become a perfect place for germination. This is a baton otherwise known as a rat kangaroo. They're herbivores. At the moment, if you listen carefully, you can hear it munching on some roots or tubers that it's eating. All of these animals are so tame, but it's no wonder foreign cats and foxes have almost wiped them out. As it feeds, it effectively ploughs this hard soil, allowing air and water in, vital for the plants that live here. But so that the herbivores don't do too much damage, this miniature Serengeti also has its own mini lion. This is an eastern quoll, a pocket-sized marsupial predator. Don't be fooled by size. He can take prey much larger than himself. What's important is that unlike cats and foxes, quolls have co-evolved with their prey, so they are a critical part of this ecosystem. The Rothwell experiment is working. Rare species of plants, birds and mammals, the entire grassland is making a comeback here. <laughs> 